Hi everyone, this is your how-to teacher, Sierra, and I'm coming back with a quick video because I noticed a lot of people were wondering how to actually embed your PowerPoint into uh, Microsoft Teams. So this video is specifically for Microsoft Teams users and wanting to know how to take their virtual classroom and put it into Teams where students don't have to click on a link and go outside of Teams to use the virtual classroom. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And we're also going to go over a little problem that I found while doing this. So to start, once you have your virtual classroom completed, Make sure it's saved and make sure it's saved to OneDrive. So I've opened up OneDrive right here online and here's my saved uh, classroom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to click copy link. Now this little box will pop up. Make sure it says anyone with the link can edit. I typically click that and uncheck that box and click apply. And then you will copy. Once you have that copied, you're gonna open up your Microsoft Teams. I use the uh, actual version, not the online version. And I'm gonna go to whatever channel I want my classroom to be in. So I didn't want it in my general, so I created a channel called Classroom. I'm gonna go up to the top where the plus sign is and I'm going to add a tab. I'm gonna to go to website. I'm going to name it whatever I want the tab to read. So virtual classroom. And then I'm gonna paste that link. Now I'm gonna to go to the very end of that link. And I am going to type the following. I'm going to use the and symbol or ampersand. A M D equals and symbol again. Action equals embed view. So you're going to type the and sim symbol. A M D equals and symbol again, action equals embed view with no space. I'm going to uncheck the post to the channel. Otherwise, the more you do this, the more it's gonna fill up in your channel. And I'm going to click save. And there you go. It pops up, it's open for everybody to use. I can get rid of this because it's loading correctly. All your links will still work. Everything will still work just fine. And the students can do whatever. If you just have one page like this, then you're good, you can stop there. If your links just kind of go externally, you're good. If you ran into the problem where, let me show you, let's go to letter E room, where you're in a room and you have things that the kids can click on, but let's say you have kids that just like to click everywhere or they're, they haven't quite figured out the mouse or the anything like that, and they click somewhere else they're not supposed to. Well, I found that it just, automatically advances to the next slide. So that can be a problem. I didn't want that. I wanted them to only be able to do what they needed to do and use the guides to get in and out of rooms. So I found it took me a while to figure out how to do this, but I was able to figure out a way to have it where it won't advance. What you're going to have to do is go back into your PowerPoint and I've already done it on a few pages. So we'll go back to that letter E room. 
what you're going to do is you're going to take, you're going to go to insert, take a rectangle shape, and you're going to create a rectangle over your entire project. Make sure the whole thing is covered. You're going to fill that shape with no fill and outline it with no outline. Then once you have basically an invisible rectangle over your entire slide, you're gonna make sure it's highlighted. And there you go. Then you're going to right click it until you get your whole uh, format box to pop up and you're going to link it. Now I can see this is slide number eight. So I'm gonna link it to its exact same slide. So slide number eight. Now, last part, um, with that still highlighted, that invisible box, I'm gonna go to shape format and I am going to send that shape to the back. Now this will work only if your background um, has been created using the back format background. So your background doesn't move. The only things that move are the items that you put into your classroom. So if you've created your own background and you made it an actual background and not just a regular picture, then this will work perfectly for you. So now I have a box in the back of everything else. Everything else should be able, yep, everything else is in front of that invisible box. So now, now that it's saved, I'm gonna go back. It shows, so now, I'm gonna do that same thing again. I'm gonna copy the link. I'm gonna go back to my Teams. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna to go to settings. And that way I can just change the uh, URL. And I'm gonna keep that ampersand, AMD and everything after that. I'm going to highlight everything before that. Backspace, Control V, and then save. So your PowerPoint's going to come back up. Get rid of that. And now I've done this slide already. My links still work just like they did. But now if, let's say, somebody clicks the background on accident, all it's doing is relinking itself to the same slide. So it's not going to go anywhere but slide one. If I go to my word wall and go to the A room, I've done this one already as well. They can click anywhere, but it's just going to take them back to the same slide. But they can also still do the things they're supposed to do on here. All my links still work and go to that letter E room. Same thing. That's the one we just did. I can click anywhere that I'm not supposed to click and it's just going to relink itself to that same room. So that's why you see the video reloads. But on a page with no video, you wouldn't notice. So that's the simplest way I have been able to find to solve that little problem. Of course, there still are the buttons down here. I haven't figured out how to get rid of those yet. But I guess as long as you maybe tell your kids don't click those buttons, it should be fine. So hopefully that was very helpful for you all. All right. Bye-bye.